So all of you know about Thor and his mighty hammer or Zeus hurling the thunderbolts, but do you know there is yet another god Perun that not only ruled the skies but struck fear into the hearts of warriors and commanded the very forces of nature. A god so powerful that his name echoes through the mountains, through the forest, to the very roots of the earth itself. His name has been shrouded in mystery. It has been lost in the mists of time, buried beneath the ancient shrine. Yet his name remains throughout all the Slavic lands. This is the god of thunder, the god of war, the god of justice, and the god of untamed power. So let's look at all the evidence that we have for Perun, who he is, and why he is still present throughout all the Slavic lands. If you're into Slavic mythology or have briefly dabbled in it, you must have heard the name Perun. A guy wielding an axe, a badass thunder god, but that is really the extent of most people's knowledge. And there is a pretty good reason for that. The Slavic mythology is just not well covered overall, and there is barely anywhere in the media that you're going to learn about it. The reason for that is also because we barely have any evidence, so it's really hard to say anything for certain. For example, with Greek and Roman mythology, we have a ton of written resources, even though we still don't know a whole lot about the actual religion. With Norse mythology, we do know a decent amount because we have found actual written evidence with the sagas in Iceland. But with Slavic mythology, it is so much different. We're essentially cross tying and examining everything we found through various archaeological excavations. And the only written resources we have are from a few Christian authors that didn't really paint anything in a favorable light. And we also have a few treaties that were written where the old gods were mentioned. Slavs also, despite controlling most of Eastern Europe, weren't exactly one unified tribe, so various tribes worshipped various gods. However, with the case of Perun, pretty much every single tribe had worshipped him. In some cases, he was the main god, in some, he was one of the higher gods, but he was almost always at the top of the hierarchy. So to get right to the point, who exactly was Perun? What was he a god of? What was his character? And what do we really know? So to put it in the simplest term possible, because a lot of people are familiar with Norse mythology, he's essentially the Slavic equivalent of Thor. There is a crazy amount of overlap. Just how Thor was wielding the Mjolnir, the hammer, Perun was wielding an axe, just as he was chasing Loki around, Perun was chasing Veles. However, while there are definitely a ton of similarities, there are also quite a bit of differences as well. However, Perun isn't actually strictly a Slavic god. There is pretty much an identical god called Perkunas in Baltic mythology, and we don't really know which culture actually adopted the god first, because Slavs and Balts lived in the same region. That is actually the case with most Indo-European religions, and there is a reason why Perun, Perkunas, Thor, and Zeus share a ton of similarities. Despite thunder being strongly associated with Perun, he wasn't actually just a god of thunder. He was a god of justice. He was the god of law. He was the god of war, amongst other things. Now, here the sources get really murky because various tribes worshipped various things, and we don't really have a Slavic mythology pantheon laid out, so we don't know where he was exactly but pretty much every single tribe put him near the top, and for most tribes, he was at the exact top of the hierarchy. Now, as you would imagine, as a god of war, he was armed with several weapons. Most notable was his axe, but he was also found with a mace and a bow and arrow. Interesting enough, when people had found prehistoric stone tools, as well as fossilized lighting, which are essentially stones that form after lighting strikes, people call these Perun stones. Furthermore, a Montenegrin folk song mentioned Perun using golden apples, so golden apples were something akin to talismans of ultimate destruction that he was also found using in at least one source. However, obviously, his most notable weapon was the axe, and that is why we had found so many axe amulets across the various grave sites, from Serbia to Poland to Russia to even Scandinavia. Of course, outside of supporting his followers during war, Perun was also a custodian of law and justice, and as you would imagine, as he was a god of thunder, many people were afraid of him, so they didn't really want to cross him. This leads us to one of the most interesting sources that we have, that are actually written. So we have a Byzantine and Kievan Rus treaty from 10th century from Prince Oleg, who sent his men to the shrines to swear to Perun and Veles. A few years later, some few decades later, Prince Igor also did the same thing, so this meant that swearing an oath to Perun was a sacred oath that you didn't want to break. So from the mythology side, this brings us to the most interesting bit, and that is Perun and Veles and their rivalry. This is actually very similar to Thor and Loki and Thor chasing Loki around, however, there are some differences. There is a bit of a symbolic meaning with 
heavenly and earthly so Perun was presenting the high places while Veles was presenting the lower lands and this is very well supported with the current evidence that we have. A lot of evidence for Perun was found in the high places while evidence for Veles was found in the lower places and this is actually evident with the names like we have a lot of places in Europe named Perun that are high and there are valleys that are named Veles. For example in Croatia there is a hill named Perun, in Bosnia there is a mountain named Perun and also in Bulgaria the Pirin mountains are thought to be named after Perun as well. Now we haven't actually found many shrines over the years because the shrines were mainly in the forest they weren't really built to last thousands of years and also most of them were destroyed however we have an interesting archaeological excavation from some 70 years ago near Novgorod where we had actually found a decently preserved temple and it looked essentially like this you had a platform in the middle there was a trench dug out there was the statue of Perun in the middle of the platform and fires were lit in a circle around it to symbol the ritual However, when it comes to the most notable symbol of Perun, these are the oak trees. Oak trees in general are very important within Slavic mythology as they represent this life and death cycle. And we have actually found shrines to Perun within the groves of very large oak trees. Interesting enough, when it comes to the Proto-Slavic language, the word Perun actually meant oak. But later, as it evolved into the Slavic language, it eventually started meaning to strike or to destroy something. So essentially being tied to light. We can't say anything for certain about the rituals that were present because not many were preserved but we have one that was actually preserved until recently in the Balkans called Dodola or Perperuna which was essentially like a ritual dance to bring in the rain during the times of intense droughts. It was believed that Perperuna was the wife of Perun or his female personification but we can't really say anything for certain because we don't really have all that much evidence. A lot of it is up to speculation. Different sources state different things so one of the sources the primary chronicle which is one of the main sources states that Perun's wife was Mokosh, while his children were Yarilo and Morana, Yarilo being the god of spring, while Morana was the goddess of winter. What we can say for 100% certain though is that Perun was a significant god, but how did he actually disappear seeing that he was so significant? The answer to that is that he never actually disappeared. The Christians, as they had done with most of the pagan gods, had demonized them and wrote them as the false gods. And we have one source of Prince Vladimir of Kiev that first built the shrines to Perun, but as he converted to Christianity, he had tore them down, he dragged them to the streets and he proclaimed them as false gods. However, this conversion wasn't always violent. We have lands where this kind of happened gradually and Christian missionaries had essentially replaced the pagan gods with their own versions of the saints. They essentially bargained in a way for it. So for example, they replaced Perun with Saint Eliah, the Jewish prophet that came into the sky with a fiery chariot. He threw fire from the sky. So it was kind of close to it. So that is how in the Balkans, Perun became Ilya Gromovnik. On the other side, the Roman Catholic Church had some different meanings. So, for example, they replaced Perun with Michael the Archangel because he led the heavenly armies. He fought against the Satan. So it was kind of similar. Perun was also sometimes associated with St. George. So it was really, they essentially had the Bible and the book. So it was the closest thing they could get to it. But despite the fact that these traditions were heavily modified, they were never actually removed. For example, in Serbia, we have Slavas, which is essentially pagan rituals just with Christian saints. And also the burning of oak is still done during Christmas which is not really related to Christmas it's really related to Perun. The strongest evidence that is kind of void of most speculation is the fact that it is still used in the name across all the Slavic lands. For example Perun is used as last names and first names across most of the nations. Even more interestingly we have a plant called Iris Germanica which is called Perunica because it is thought that this plant grew where lighting is struck. The biggest evidence is in the actual names so we got mountains from Serbia to Poland to Russia to Bosnia. We also have various towns from Czechia to Slovakia to even Austria that still bear the name of Perun. All of this, of course, ultimately leaves us with very scattered evidence. We can really only kind of reconstruct it. But what is certain was that Perun was the main deity and one of the most important gods in Slavic mythology. Thank you for watching. Check out what training was like during the ancient times and also subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. See you next time.